Hey, what's up everybody? It's Justin from Inlight Studio. And in this video, I'm gonna go over the steps I use to create this portrait of my sister. Every now and again, uh, inspiration will hit you to try out something different. And I came up with the idea for this one while showering actually one day and was noticing the drops that uh, stain the glass and thought it makes a pretty cool texture. So uh, my sister always being the willing model that she is, was willing to pose for this one. Uh, this is actually the before shot of what it looked like. So uh, we're going to go over how I turned it into this. It's strange how inspiration seems to hit you most in the shower. Well, at least for me. So this is some of the behind the scenes of the shoot. Uh, as you can see, I shot with a strobe to the left um, against an umbrella just to diffuse it. And then I shot through the shower glass door. Obviously, I had to wet it first and just splash as much water as we could onto it. Uh, focus was quite a challenge actually, needing to shoot through foggy glass. So I actually had to end up shooting on manual just to get it to focus correctly. But uh, yeah, after about I think half an hour worth of shooting we eventually got the image which we wanted. Um, which ended up being this one. So I'm not going to go into too much depth of some of the techniques that I used. Um, you can check out some of my other videos for more explanation on those things like skin retouching and dodge and burn and so on. But hopefully you'll still be able to follow along. So the first step in my editing is always uh, correcting the skin. So what we want to do is just get rid of any blemishes or fine marks that need to come off. So I'm going to duplicate this layer with Control J and then just go over here to the spot healing brush tool just go quite close and just remove any spots that you can see So after removing the spots, the next thing we're going to do is smooth out the skin and that we do with a technique called frequency separation and uh, just essentially what that does is it separates all this fine detail and texture of the skin from the tone underneath and then puts it on two different layers so that we can blur the skin and then put the texture back on just to give it that smooth out almost surreal kind of look. So what we do is we're going to duplicate this layer again and uh, we need to isolate the skin only because that's what we're going to be working on so we're going to go to the mask tool down here double click on it and then go to color range and with the color picker you're going to select the skin and then hold shift and keep clicking so we're adding to the selection over here anything that's white is what's selected anything that's black is is deselected and it won't be affected by the filters that we use so you just keep you can either click over here in the mask or click here on the image just holding shift so that we add into the selection if it starts selecting things we don't want you hold the alt key and click on those colors just to remove them from the mask so we're just going to try and get this as close as possible so that just the face is selected okay, maybe even bring play with the fuzziness to expand it slightly that seems pretty close, and I'll click OK. And it's going to apply the mask. So now if we isolate the mask by pressing ALT and clicking on it, you can see what's opaque and what's not. Another step that I do is just to go to Image Adjustments and Levels, and that we just want to crush the blacks and the whites a bit, so we can kind of harden the edges of the mask even more. Uh, so here you can just refine it in even further if you need to um, by going to the brush tool and you can just further whiten all these parts that are part of the face and then with the black black brush we can remove anything that shouldn't be there like the eyes and the lips we just want to affect the skin only ok 
okay if we alt click on that layer alone we can see what's been selected and it's pretty much it's just a skin which is exactly what we want so now we're going to duplicate this layer twice so press ctrl j twice and it's made two copies of it and we can turn those off and we're going to name this bottom one blur and the top two will name texture one and the other one texture two this is just to make it easier so we can see what we're working on it's good to keep organized uh, especially with retouching your layers tend to pile up and eventually you get lost of what lay and what adjustment does what okay so with the blur we're now going to blur her skin out and for that we go to filter blur gaussian blur and you're just going to play with the amount of pixels till it blurs the skin out so that you don't see any more discoloration or any unevenness in the skin you just want it to smooth it all out almost like porcelain so you just a good ballpark generally is between 40 to 60 pixels you don't want to go too much because then it just disappears like that and becomes one massive haze so we still want to keep some of the contrast in the skin so we just bring it down a bit and that seems about good so click ok and it's applied the mask there so now that we've evened it out we need to put the texture back like the pores and just the fine detail that is supposed to be on skin so go to the first texture layer and turn that back on and then we're going to go to filter other and high pass and what that's going to do is it's going to make a map of the texture on her face so for texture one we're going to work on the smaller details in her face and for that we want the radius to be down somewhere around two to three pixels and that you can see picks up just this fine texture and detail over there so that seems about right we'll click ok then we're going to change the blending mode of this layer to soft light and then that overlays the texture back on top we can just turn it on and off and you can see how it's put the texture back then on the second layer we can do the same thing filter other and high pass and for this one we want the radius to bring back some of the larger details so we'll bring this up a lot more so we can start seeing all of this texture come back and that seems fine, we'll click OK and then also change this layer to soft light alright now we can start painting away some of the blur where it's not supposed to be because as you can see a nose and some facial features are disappearing so for this we can start painting on the mask with a black brush so now we can start painting some of the blur away just to make it look more realistic so make sure the mask is selected you go to the brush tool and we're going to be painting with a black brush you generally want to start with a low opacity that you can slowly start painting away and gradually see what you're doing so I usually use about 20 or 30 percent and then just start brushing over the areas that shouldn't have the blur over it Alright, so you can just always turn it on and off just to watch your progress and see how you're doing. Next thing I want to do is we want to drop the opacity of this effect a bit so that it's not so strong. You can change that over here with the opacity and bring it down to about 60% or so. You can turn it on and off just to keep checking on how you're doing. And then also we want to drop the texture layers down a bit so that they also aren't too strong. Just work a bit closer so we can see. And that seems better. So if we go to our before and after, you can see we've smoothed the skin off nicely. And not too much where it looks super unrealistic. 
okay so we can group all of this and call that skin next up we're going to work on the contrast and the light of a face and that's the technique of dodge and burn so we're going to create a layer new layer and you change the mode to soft light and then tick this box to, to fill it with a neutral color and say okay so now we're going to go to the dodge and burn tool which is this one over here anything that's dodged is going to brighten the image and anything that's burned is going to darken it this is kind of the same principle that a makeup artist would use when contouring a face uh, it's just darkening certain areas and lightening certain areas just to bring out facial features a lot better so we're going to be doing the same thing so i'll start with burn uh, make sure the range is set to shadows exposure can be quite low as well and then we're just going to start painting over the areas that should be darker like uh, this bridge on the side of the nose and eyelids under the chin just anything that's already in shadow you just want to dock and that keep painting over it You always want to start with a, a low opacity on the brush so that you can just gradually build this effect up. You can always turn your layer on and off just to watch your progress. I'm just going to darken the pupil and eyelashes. It just draws attention to the eyes more. I'm going to darken the cheekbone slightly as well. Alright, then after that, we're going to use the dodge tool, and that's going to be for the highlights of the face. So we're just going to enhance all these hot spots, brighten them more like on the top of the nose the forehead and just even the iris if we can bring some of the color back uh, highlights on the lips as well so dodging and burning takes quite a bit of practice and just studying of the human face and just what areas need to be highlighted and what should be pushed into shadow um, but that obviously comes with a lot of practice and just watching what other retouchers have done and even if you have a look at mo fashion magazines and models and you can just see how the face is enhanced just with the use of contrast and light so again we can turn on and off just to see what we're doing um, obviously it is a bit exaggerated so which you d um, which is not a problem so we can always dial back how much of this effect we're going to apply with the opacity so I'll drop this a lot further down and you can just see how it's subtly changing the shape of her face almost just by brushing into the highlights and the darks so next up I'm going to further work on some of the contrast of her face and we're going to do that with the curves adjustment layer so we'll click on curves go to this little hand icon over here and then We'll click anywhere on the shadows, click and drag it down and that's going to darken that area and then go to the highlights, click and drag it up and that's going to boost the highlights so it created the strong contrast effect and then what we need is going to invert the mask of that layer by pressing Control i and then go back to the brush tool and paint this effect back in so it changes to a white brush and make sure the opacity is low and just slowly paint this back in and then as always we can drop the opacity so that it's not so strong just these subtle changes tone that makes it stand out a lot better so that looks good uh, now I'm going to use another curves adjustment and this time I'm just going to affect the lips so again little hand just click on the darker area of the lips and then click on the bright area and push up you can also manually just to change it if you know how to work with curves and just change the points over here and then again control i to invert the mask go back to the brush tool 
and with the white brush just paint this effect on this area only where I want it to come back and then again just drop the opacity so that it's not so strong that's why you always want to push your effect when you're brushing quite harshly so you can always bring it back afterwards so you can either go for very strong or very minimal but it gives you better control that way alright so that's pretty cool next I'm gonna start changing some of the color tone and just a general contrast to the image so, so we're gonna again go to curves and this time I'm gonna change which color mode we are affecting so curves is broken up into the red green and the blue uh, we're gonna use the blue anything we adjust on this side is affecting the highlights and anything on the side is affecting the color of the shadows so if we push it down and we'll start pushing a bit more yellow into the highlights and this will be pushing a bit more blue into the shadows but we're just gonna drop drop the blue out of it and add more yellow into the shadows into the highlights sorry same thing with the green channel can just get rid of some of the green there and then the red so this obviously is depending on what kind of color tint you want to go for in the image and again you can watch your before and after just to see how you're changing it I'll drop the opacity a bit and then I'm going to use color balance uh, the adjustment layer and that also just lets you push certain colors into the shadows the midtones or the highlights so we'll start with the shadows I just want to push some of a more cyan kind of color into it just to make it look a bit more moody since that was the vibe that I was going for and then in the midtones a bit more yellow into it same thing with the highlights there's obviously no one specific way of doing this this is all dependent on the tint and the color tones that you want to go for in the image it looks better it's good to just zoom in and out just to get a different perspective of your shot it sometimes looks different up close as to zoomed out and I'm going to apply another curves layer and, and just to change the general contrast of the whole image just to fade it out slightly and push the black point up so that it looks a bit more matte like and drop the opacity a bit cool I'm noticing that a face seems to be quite um, saturated and orangey so we're going to drop that a bit we're going to use a U saturation adjustment layer and then under this drop down we just want to affect the reds so this little scope is what this adjustment is, is going to affect so we can just broaden that slightly we just want it to affect this general same color as the skin tone between the reds and the yellows and then we can drop the saturation a bit you can see it's only affecting that color so if we push it up or we'll bring it down it's only affecting the, the oranges and the reds so I'll just drop it a bit you can also change the U if maybe you notice there's a tint to the skin that needs changing um, I'll maybe just push this a bit towards yellowish more that's fine you can turn it on and off just to see it's very subtle changes but it makes a difference to the overall image and we can just keep backtracking and watching our steps going to the before and the after can you really see the difference that we've made okay next with the original shot I didn't manage to get as much texture on the glass as I wanted with the water droplets so I shot this image um, of the glass just to use as a texture later on to add back over so I'll bring this into Photoshop so this is the texture that I shot of the glass just when I managed to get the droplets the way I wanted to look so we're going to drag this one into our shot just place it the way you want it where you want it to be 
and then create a mask for it with this icon over here and then again with the brush tool selected and this time with black because we're going to paint certain parts of it away just make a big brush and then start painting all on the mask and starting to make that disappear anything that's black is disappearing anything that's white is still showing through so we just want to paint the model back in Then next I'm going to drop the opacity of this layer and then keep painting painting it away so that it's not so strong uh, if you make a mistake and you paint too much away you can always change the brush back to white and paint some of it back in Okay, next we're just going to enhance the contrast of this texture layer only so I'm going to create a uh, curves adjustment again and we're going to click this little icon over here and what's that, what that's going to do is it's going to make sure it only affects the layer beneath it because we don't want to change the contrast of all our other layers so now I'll just bring the contrast down that's just making the drop stand out a lot more so you can see before and after and then I'm going to create another curves adjustment again tell it to affect only the layer beneath and we can just play with the color tint of this just to make sure it matches the previous one Looks a lot better. And then last of all, just make some general contrast adjustments again. I'm just going to darken the entire image and then invert the mask. What I just want to do is paint some of the darkness back in just to certain parts, almost creating a vignette on the edge. And just darken certain parts of it only so that only the things that I want to stand out will be left so just painting the edges okay and then again can dial this back a bit with the opacity so that the effect is not so strong and then that's the final result um, so we have a look again at our before and after that's what the shot was and after some editing that's what we can turn it into which is pretty awesome um, I know some of these techniques I kind of rushed through and may be a bit more advanced for some viewers but uh, hopefully you can still get some tips out of it and uh, the more you keep practicing, the more you keep creating your own shots, the better this that you get so just go play basically. That's what I did with this one and I was pretty happy with the end result. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, if you have any questions or feedback feel free to message me. Cheers for now.